Hey everybody, Rick here with Game Trade Media. We're coming to you live yet again from Reno, Nevada at the Gamma Trade Show. I've got James Ernest here, who's from Cheap Ass Games, to show us some of their cool stuff out, coming out, near future. Uh, a little bit of all, yeah, I I'll think. Take it. How's it going? Uh, it's going well. Uh, welcome. I have my last tired day of show face on. Yeah, Let's it's almost done. Not that that's a, <laughs> we, we love being here, but it's, it's, it's a yeah, lot well, of Yeah, well, I started off doing lectures and seminars for the first half of the show, and mm -hmm. that wore me out, and then we opened up the trade show floor. Right. Yeah, I know. But, uh, and it's demo after demo after demo. Yeah, yeah, it's solid yeah. work. I love it. All right, so you have Button Men for us? First thing I'm going to show you is Button Men. This is a game that is uh, almost 20 years old. Wow. The original Button Men. It looks Man. great for being... Well, you know, it, it looks better than it ever has. That's I mean, right. that this box is a, for 20 years this old. Is, this amazing. is a brand new edition that's coming out this year. <laughs> and it used to be on pinback buttons. That's why it was called Button Men. Oh, okay. It's also about guys beating each other up, which is now what it's still about, of course. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but the new box has 48 characters inside and okay. 30 dice. Okay. Uh, for a retail of 35. Not bad. And so we did this package because some people don't have dice. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of gamers have dice. Uh, but also because we wanted to get the most amount of characters okay. in the box as we could. So we put one button in there. I don't know, the button's not in there. But there's a button in there that says, I play the game. Right. Because that's how the old buttons used to work. You'd walk around and wear them at conventions mm -hmm. and say, let's, let's play. Oh, it's nice. a five-minute pickup game. And uh, instead of having a, a button for every character, we just have that one now. Okay. Uh, but so let me show you how it plays, because yes. we've actually got time to do a whole, a whole game. I'll take it. Uh, I'll kind of get the stuff out of the box here. All right. Some dice. So I've been told today that you have to talk to the dice, too, to get them to do what you want them to do. Oh, yeah? Like in Reno and, you know, the casino. Oh, yeah, thing. for sure. There's, 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 <laughs> all, wow, there's all the beautiful 48 characters. Yep. Um, Absolutely. Look at Janet. Janet. Good. She looks great. So I've got uh, I've got Tony and Tanya. That's my usual demo pair okay. right now. Just pick who you want to be. All right, I'll take Tony. He's and the the numbers on the card tells you what dice your character has. So I've got a four and a six and a twelve, right. and my two X's are anything, but they have to match. So I'll oh. and you you do that too. So pick your eights and your twenties, and then take whatever you want for All your right. last. Eights, twenties, and I'll take a six. All right, I'll. I'll take a couple of 12s for my X's, and we'll get the rid, of, rid of the rest of these. All right. You're going to start by rolling all your dice. Okay. Do what you got to do. I don't know what it is yet. Do what you got to do, whatever that is. Yeah. Okay, I got to straight so I win right away. Right not, no, that's not how it works. Dang it. Hey, I'm going to make this simpler, and I'm going to sub out your, your die for a white one. Okay. We use the black dice for special dice. There's a bunch of okay. different kinds of powered dice in here. All right. And that'll just confuse me, because... Makes sense. Because I'm like that. All right. So the player who rolled the lowest single number is going to go first. So if I have the smaller dice, I'm mm -hmm. more likely to go yeah. first, uh, but not always. Just arrange your dice where we can read them, because mm -hmm. we're going to use them the way they are for a little while. On your turn, you're going to capture one of your opponent's dice. We're just taking turn capturing each okay. other's dice. Mm -hmm. And there's two kinds of attack that I can make. I can make a skill attack, where I add up several dice to equal one of yours. Mm -hmm. And I can make a power attack where I have a die that's equal to or greater than one of yours. So a power attack, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a power attack, and I don't have one. Okay. Five could take a five, but any number higher than five could take a five. Right. Uh, a skill attack would be, getting a little glare here, let's see, can I add up to 17? Yes, I can. You got a 17 on your d20. Mm -hmm. Five and five and four and one and two is 17. So I do a skill attack with all of these. Right. I re-roll only the dice that I attacked with, which in this case is all of all them. All of them. Right? But I'm taking your 17 out of play, I'm going to reroll all my dice, and that'll make it your turn. Okay. Okay, so now, you want to protect your big dice. You want to make sure that I can't take your other d20, because mm -hmm. they're worth their size in points. Oh, wow. Um, you've got a 9 on it right now, and I've got no way to add up to 9, but I do have a 9. You wish you could get rid right. of this, but you can't, because you've got no way to add up to 9. The only way to protect this is actually to make an attack with it and take my 9 away. Right. And that's not, I'm not saying that's what you have to do. I'm saying that's one of your options. You could mm -hmm. also do 8 takes 8 or 5 takes 2. You've got sure. a lot of options there. I am going to do the 9. On, All right, let's do nine, that. 9, nine takes 9. So that comes to me. Yeah. You take away the 12, and you re-roll the d20. And now it's a 12, which I can add up to, unfortunately. If you rolled a 13, I couldn't make it. Right. I've got an 8 and a bunch of 2s. But I can do 8 plus 2 plus 2 makes 12, and I'll take that. Mm -hmm. And that leaves us here. All right, so my eight will take your six. That makes sense. All right, and we roll. Oh, painful. Uh, it's not too good. So I'm going to do three takes one. 
and try to get this 12 where your fives can't see it. Oh, that didn't Ooh, work. Ooh, I do like it that my five can see it. I'll okay. take it. I'm ready to roll this one. All right. Well, now I can do four takes four, so I'll do that. And you're going to do five takes five. Yes. And then if you roll the two or less, I could steal it. But I can't make an attack. I'm going to have to pass. You're going to go again. You'll take that. Yep. And now the score is mm -hmm. the size of the dice you took plus half of the size of the dice that you kept. Okay. So you're going to get four points for this eight-sided die, and mm -hmm. you're going to get full size for all of those. Uh, mm -hmm. If I add mine up, I've got 40 for those two 20s. Right. 48 and 4 is whatever 48 and, and 48 and 6 is 54. There we go. 46, 47. Uh, so 46, 50. 50. So I've actually scored more points than you, even mm -hmm. though you kept mm -hmm. a die, because your dice are overall so much bigger than mine. Right. So the goal is not to take all my dice. The goal is to not lose enough points, right? Right. All right, so let's do that again, okay. because having lost the first round, mm -hmm. you can now change your X. Right. You can swap that out for anything else in the box, okay. and i got to stay the way I am. And there's, there's a lot of math in sort of figuring out what your X should be to make mm -hmm. your odds the best. I mean, we're gonna, we don't need to play another full round, sure. but that's the basics of how the yeah, game works. I would take a 12. Sure, okay. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to swap time. a 6 out for a 12, yeah. and that's your new character. Yeah, cool. Yep. Very so, easy. So that's, these characters are from the core. They're mm -hmm. the basic characters that just have swing dice. Okay. There's three other factions in the box. There's the Delta that have poison dice. Sorry, the Delta have shadow dice. Okay. Uh, they capture upside down. They see up instead of down. So okay. shadow 12, showing an 8, could Is capture 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12. Oh, wow. Instead of 8 through 1. Nice. There's poison dice from the west side. They're worth a negative point, so you don't want to take them. Okay. So if I've got poison dice, I'm trying to force you to take them away. Oh, interesting. And then there's rush dice, which can capture two dice at once. So they're super, super powerful, but right. they also are vulnerable to the same kind of attack from anybody. Okay. So that's nice. the most complicated. You know, you teach that one last. Sure. And then when you start mixing them together, you see there's so many different battles in this one box. Right. Buttonman also has a 20-year history and lots of characters from that 20 years that are still compatible with these. Nice. So, yeah, this is a great starter introduction to a really broad category. And how many people can play this at one setting? So the core game, as we saw, is basically a two-player game, but All you right. can expand that to multiplayer. Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of rules in the rulebook for more sort of intricate multiplayer scenarios, which you can play over a whole weekend. Oh, wow. Or just a big round-robin uh, five-, six-player game that's all going at once, but with specific targets you're trying to take out. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. There's Button Man. There's Button Man. I like it. Very nice. What, so what else do we have? I, I, I recognize this, uh, this game from a, from a book. That's right. So the next thing we want to talk about is TAC. TAC is a abstract strategy game, which I don't usually get to do. Okay. Because I can't usually figure out how to sell them. Like, I love making them. Right. But you need a reason that someone's going to buy it, or it's kind of not worth printing. In this case, we have the best reason in the world, because this is actually the game from a Patrick Rothfuss book. Uh, the Wise Men's Fear is the second in the King Killer Chronicles. Okay. And I worked with Patrick to make the game that he describes in that book. So the book came out right. years ago, but he didn't really know what the game was going to be. He just knew what it was going to be like. Okay. And I worked together with him and said, okay, well, from that description, let's see if we can make a classic style abstract game that, that your fans will love, that will fit the description in the book. And this is what we came up with. Uh, just really quickly. The goal of the game, well, you, you should have the black pieces, and I'll take okay. the white pieces. All right. And I'll kind of explain with some sample pieces. The board starts empty, but the goal of the game is to make a road, which is just a line of pieces okay. that connects opposite sides of the board. Okay. It does not have to be a straight line, so a road could look like this. Spaces are not connected diagonally, so i got to make that little jog there. Okay. Uh, it could be more complicated than that, but mm -hmm. it could be... East to west, it could be north to south, but anything like that for either of us is going to be a winner. Okay. The gameplay is, on your turn, you can either put a piece in an empty space, or you can move a stack of pieces that belongs to you. It means you have the piece on top. Right. So placing is obvious. It's like tic-tac-toe. We would just take right. turns okay. doing that, filling up the board for a while. Um, and actually, we play each other's pieces to start, just to kind of mix it up. But. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. I'll do this. You can do that. Um, okay. Put a few pieces out there, and then I'll show you the rest of the rest of the rules. All right. Uh, sure. And typically, the beginning of the game starts like tic tac toe. You're really just doing uh, territory control, mm -hmm. right? That's not a legal move because you got to place an empty space. Dang it. Yeah. Nice try. I, but, I, I did try. But the way these stacks form is through movement. So if you wanted to have a piece there, oh. you could do that, and now you've got that stack. Then I will do that. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'll 
I'll do this. I'll keep getting some pieces out there. Mm -hmm. I'll talk about a couple of special pieces. Uh, one of them is a standing stone. You can play a piece like this, mm -hmm. in which case it is not counted as part of your road, but mm -hmm. it can't have a piece on top of it. Okay. So if I wanted to be on top of a stack and you couldn't easily take it back from me, I would mm -hmm. do, do it with a standing stone. Okay. Uh, go ahead. All right. I will click here. You've also got a capstone which is, you can't put a piece on top of this, obviously. Right. Uh, it does, however, count as part of the road. Okay. And it also has the ability to crush a standing stone. So if you've got a standing stone in my way, right. I can get rid of it with that capstone. On a move like that. With a move, yeah, okay. yeah, that's right. All nice. the pieces move exactly the same way. They get into stacks mm -hmm. and then they spread out in stacks. Nice. Let me show you what a move looks like once the stack sort of gets complicated. We don't have a tall enough stack yet, but when you move a stack, you pick up as many as five pieces off the top. You right. go in a straight line, and you drop them one or more at a time as you go. Oh, wow. Covering whatever. So like Moncala, you pick up a whole handful of stuff and run it out. Right. And this one, I can drop two or three or four, whatever I want mm -hmm. in each space. So I can take a mixed stack and run it out all the same color nice. to cover up a whole bunch of, of land. So the more, okay. the more stacks, the more taller stacks mm -hmm. get out there, the more complicated the game gets, the more intricate the strategy is right. based on just those basic movement rules. Cool. That's very cool. Yeah. We've had a lot of success with this. The University Edition Attack is coming out right now. It's a smaller, more portable version. We did a classic set last year for $55 retail. This one is $40. Okay. And it comes with a, a carrying bag. You don't. You can play without the board. So if you just wanted to carry it in your pocket, you could mm -hmm. carry it in this. Okay. Um, the way we play without a board is just to put a, a coin to mark the center of the board. And, and it's it, five by five. pretty soon you see it as you put the pieces in play. Right. Um, nice. So yeah, we're really happy with this set. It's, it's, of course, slightly improved all the graphics and everything from the first edition because we have a little more time to work sure. on it. So, yeah, this is pretty nice. Pretty nice. So, uh, some other moves, like if I wanted to move this one to here, could I move it and make it a castle? No, it's okay. got to be standing okay. when you place it. Oh, okay. And, and once it's down, it's down. Okay. Uh, and, in fact, that's kind of part of the Patrick Rothfuss universe. They have standing stones in the countryside that right. no one knows where they came from. They're like Stonehenge, right? All right. But sometimes they're still standing and sometimes they've fallen over. And that sort of standing stone falling down storyline and road building and, and pieces stacking up to become a more powerful mm -hmm. piece, all of that is part of what Patrick started with. And then nice. I sort of transformed it into a nice. uh, worky set of rules. Yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful game. I actually have played it with Cassidy before. And uh, I, I, I actually love it. It's, it's on my shelf. It's one of my, one of my go to games. Fantastic. I, but I, the thing is, is, I always forget the basics <laughs> <laughs> until I'm like, all right, we, before, you know, always when we sit down, we got to read the rules again because it could have been, you know, before, I don't invite a lot of people over my house. So when they do come over, it's like, all right, we got to get the rules out and we're going to play it. Well, it is a nice, simple set of rules. It's got the feel of a classic mm -hmm. abstract, you know, Absolutely. nothing to read, nothing to memorize, nothing funky and weird. Right. Uh, the only rule I didn't mention is if, if one of us runs out of pieces, that's also the end of the game. Oh, okay. And if nobody has a road, then we count our flat stones. So mm -hmm. one thing, another thing about walls is that more of these you play, the less points you have in that last scoring phase. Okay. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, I, I'm, I admire this game because there's a lot of levels to it. And I'm good because I play a lot of demos, but I'm really terrible at it. And when I play against the experts, they just destroy me. Nice. <laughs> now, not nice that they destroy you, but nice that there are right. experts out it there. It is nice. That I'm a designer. I think yeah. that's great. Yeah. I love to see so many levels in a game yeah. that I've made that are way beyond my ability to comprehend. So around this game, uh, is there like um, championship? tournaments? Yeah, there's a TAC association that's independent and they run tournaments and, and give prizes and, and, and ratings and all of those things. Nice. Uh, we have a little link to them in the rule book too, okay. so they're easy to find. Yeah. Very cool. So there you have it everybody, TAC. It's a, it's a beautiful game and it's a great conversation starter actually. Yeah. If you have it already kind of set up. That's right. It looks good I, on a coffee table. It does. It really does. So make sure you go to your local game store because this is available, correct? Yes, right now. absolutely. And get, pick it up if you do not, do not already have it. Slide. And All right, replace. Those. So what do we have next? The next thing I want to show you is called Girl Genius The Works. So Girl Genius. Yes. That sounds very familiar to that me. That is a Phil and Kaya Folio uh, webcomic that's been running for about 18 years. And when that comic was brand new, we did this game. Okay. Uh, but we did it with characters that they expected might someday be in the comic. Like it was all guesswork at that sure. point. Um, and I did the the inking, I did the coloring on those cards, filled in the pencils, and it was a it was sort of a first edition of this game. And that okay. was very popular, but it's been out of print for some time. And now that the 
and comic has been around for 18 years, we've gone back and said, let's do this game properly. Right. And we're actually doing a Kickstarter with four decks okay. that represent the four major episodes at the start of the comic. So they're each of them like three years long, but mm -hmm. um, they're a 60 card deck with all the characters from that time period and nice. they're sort of described by the, what, well, their abilities are very abstract, but, but you know, they're like what they do in that time mm -hmm. period. Okay. I'm gonna, it's going to take a little bit to set this up, but all right. This playmat is absolutely optional. Okay. It's also not the final version of the playmat, but this is what we're using during the campaign to right. sort of show it off. So, for those of you that don't know, Girl Genius is very much a steampunk esque uh, comic. Uh, has some really interesting characters, um, and the artist is very well known within the comic book arena. Uh, he's done a lot of um, other uh, comics besides Girl Genius. And the main character, Agatha, is the girl genius. She starts as a kid who doesn't know what she's doing. She winds up getting tangled up in a bunch of intrigue because she's the best mad scientist ever and she can make the best coffee machine in a matter of minutes and you know, all the fantastic great stuff. And, uh, and all of these amazing characters to come mm -hmm. out of this game have turned into this game. The works says, what if every character in the world was a cog in a giant machine? And okay. this is the giant machine. All right. uh, so there's characters, there's, there's uh, 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 robots, which they call clanks. There's uh, settings in this, but they all have exactly the same rules. Okay. I'm going to jumpstart our game by turning over opposite corners. Okay. You can call odd or even to go first. Uh, even. And then I'm going to sum the th them up. It's odd, so that's going to be me. Three right. and four is odd. On your turn, there. The first step is you pick a face down card and flip it up. If there's any face down cards left, you flip up a face down mm -hmm. card, like so. Okay. The second step of your turn is you take a face up card and spin it 180 degrees. So I'm going to spin. Uh, I'm going to spin this one. And this one is Agatha. That's Agatha. When you spin a card, you check it. It's, it's a puzzle game. It's like a, it's like a Tetris or a Bejeweled kind of a thing. Okay. Um, you just check around the edges of that card to see if any of the symbols are the same color as mm -hmm. the cards around it. So I'm not looking anywhere else on the board except around the board, the, the, the card that I spun. And I see there's yellow symbols here, there's one here, and there's two here. The card with the more symbols pops, which means it pops up out of the board, it gives me an instruction, and then it falls into my score pile. Okay. So this one says move all the dingbots from every score pile into mine, so it's too early to do that, no one yeah. has any. I'll just keep it for four points. I'm going to replace that card with a card from my hand, um, and it's over to you. Okay, so I will flip this one, and I oh, will spin that's one. That's very eight. nice. Okay, and it is a blue cog, and she has a blue cog, and but they're equal. They're equal. You're going to pop them both. Nice. And okay. you're going to read them in alphabetical order. That's how we break uh, ties like that. So just okay. put them both in your hand. All right. Read Agatha first, and she says, "Pop one card." Yep. So I can pop another card on the board, even a face down card if you want. You know what? I like the idea of doing <laughs> that. <laughs> nice. I'm going to pop this card. Okay, so that's in the air now, and what does it say? It says, pop one soldier, put this card into another player's score pile. Okay, so first you're going to look for a soldier, and there, uh, that would just say soldier up in the detail okay. box, which they don't. There's okay. no soldiers in play yet. All right. And then you're going to give it to me, because it says put that in my score pile. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, and now then the, the second next one is lose one turn. Lose a turn. Sorry about that. That's okay. So I actually have some extra cards in the, in the deck that say lose a turn. Okay. Uh, in case that gets complicated. It's sure. not often hard to remember to lose one turn, but sometimes we both get a bunch of those. All right. And so I'll give you that. All right. You're no, going to replace, replace those? These. Okay. So I will place... Uh, it's, it, yeah, that's right. Yeah, this way? Nope. Or, nope, this way. There you go, yeah. Yeah, that way. And then I will play uh, this one. And... This one. Sideways. Sideways. Yeah, okay. this basket weave pattern is kind of what makes the game hold together and All work, right. but but it's a little harder because we are in card sleeves here. It's harder to see the shapes of the cards, but that's how they go together. All right. So that's the basics of the game. Okay. Now I'm going to get to get, take two turns in a row, so if I can pop anything, mm -hmm. then I will set myself up for my next turn and be able to pop something great. Right. Um, and that's where the cards in your hand start working together, right? Okay. Where you can say, oh, uh, and you would have drawn back up to five at the end of your turn. You've All always right. got five cards in okay. there. Um, the only other rule is, that when the whole board is face up, you now have to make a move that'll pop something. Pre previously, you can spin whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But if there was just a card that says lose a turn, and that's the only move, you're going right. to have to take that. Oh, wow. So I will set it up, if I can, so that you're forced to do that and right. take those bad cards and get me ahead. Right. The goal is to get 70 points of cards into your score pile, and, uh, and that's pretty simple, and that's 
all of it. All yeah. the cards do different things. Each of the four decks in the Kickstarter is a different era and has kind of a different set of cards mm -hmm. and mechanics in it. And then later on in the life cycle of this game, a few months after we're done shipping the Kickstarter, mm -hmm. we're also going to do a single package that has a subset of the cards with a more reasonable retail price, just just to go into stores so people can kind of get the game and learn it. Nice. And uh, w has this Kickstarter already launched? Or no, it's going to launch next week. It's going to start March twenty right. second. Wow, that's that's a great day for this to go down. That's a that's a fun day. The March twenty second is also you know, there's a lot of conventions going on, uh -huh. a lot of good stuff. So people already have games in their mind. Yeah. So why not check out Kickstarter on March twenty second for the works by Cheap Ass Games? Absolutely. And uh, this looks beautiful. I'm going to show a few of the cards off a little bit. Here's Agatha right here. They're so good. And there's that one. This one was is uh, Baron Klaus Rufenbach. He's, uh, he's awesome. He's awesome. He's yeah. a meanie. He makes you lose a turn. Yeah, but the artwork is so good. This I'm artwork, so Phil Folio did the pencils for all of these, mm -hmm. and then the inks are being done, the colors, I mean, are being done by Nate Taylor, who's done a lot of work for us before, and okay. it is absolutely stellar. These are a really good-looking set of cards. Very cool. So if someone wanted to find out more about everything that Cheap Ass Games does. Cheapass.com. All right, there you have it, everybody. Yep. And you have all, all the social media, Facebook, Twitter, Absolutely. Instagram. Yep. yep, yep. Very cool. And after the Kickstarter is all said and done, when do we expect to see this on retail shelves? Hopefully very quickly. Um, the only question mark is the artwork. So if sure. that gets done during the campaign, we're going to send it to press right after it's done. Okay. Uh, we're hoping to get it out f in time for San Diego Comic Con. That's, that's July. It is. But yeah. we're hoping for that. That's nice. not a promise yet. I want to promise it right. when I can promise it. <laughs> but, I mean, if not San Diego, Gen Con. San Diego, Gen Con. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nice. Very cool. Well, thank you, James. Sure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We appreciate you coming up, showing us all all, all these amazing games that Cheap Ass does, Cheap Ass Games, at CheapAssGames.com. And I'm Rick here with Game Trade Media at Gamma, and I will be back real soon with the next interview. And until then, go to your local game store, become part of that community, and have a wonderful time. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching Board Games and Beyond. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.